Welcome to the Airedale. I'm Chloe Lewis. And I'm Andrew Cronister. Today we'll be talking about hunting, school barn out, and much, much more coming up on the Airedale. Directly from the Alma High School News Studio, covering news and sports from where it matters, you're watching the Airedale. You know that feeling when you sacrifice hours of your time and aspects of your mental health to complete a task with mediocre results that aren't even worth it in the end? That's called burnout. Burnout is mentally and physically draining and takes a heavy toll. It's a problem for many students in high school and in college. Sarah Nutt and Seth Canales shed some light on this ever-burning fire. Picture this. You're in kindergarten. All you know is hanging out with your friends and getting to know people and maybe whatever drama is going on in the playground. But things have changed since then. The work has piled on, school has gotten harder and harder over time. Eventually, you face burnout. Burnout is something that most of us have encountered in our lives. You're not alone, and today we'll show you how you can heal from student burnout. We interviewed a math teacher and a student counselor to find what they see in burnt out students every day. You know, I understand that it's, it's hard at certain times of year. I understand there's lots of things going on when we have a drama uh, or a theater. Um, play coming up or dance show coming up. So trying to just be as understanding as I can, but just to continue to promote setting your priorities right, um, really, you know, being tough, sticking to what you have to do, just more or less being a cheerleader for them. We talk through, you know, remind them the reason why they're doing all the things that they're doing. Um, I talk to them about having a planner, you know, like making some time management changes if they need to do that. Um, and remind them to take some time for themselves every single day to do something, maybe just five minutes. Um, five minutes of something that they enjoy doing every single day to, to kind of cool off a little bit. But don't worry, there are ways to recover from this. Ways you can improve your mental state and get out of burnout can be to arrange your schedule so you can fit in something that you enjoy. Don't be afraid to take breaks during studying, and if things get really bad, don't be afraid to ask for help. Your friends are probably facing this issue too. Studies show that 71% of students are facing burnout today. Remember to stay healthy, physically and mentally. I'm Sarah Nutt with Airwaves Media. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Home Alone, and a Charlie Brown Christmas, what do all these have in common? They're all about Christmas, of course. Evan Sanderson took a look at all of our favorite classics that turn into Christmas specials. Christmas movies, also known as Christmas specials, have been part of families' traditions for years. Although there are one hundreds of movies to choose from, we found a few favorites at Elma High School. Agri teacher Miss Lakin Brumley's favorite movie has also became a popular musical. Uh, the movie Elf. It's just a movie that I grew up watching with my family every single year, um, and we always uh, enjoyed it and found it, always thought it was hilarious. Um, and so it just kind of became a family tradition. So it's something that I, I guess I always held on to. Miss Amanda Atwell's favorite movie dates back to 1947. Um, my favorite Christmas movie is um, Miracle on 34th Street. Um, it's a classic. Um, it reminds me of the way Christmas used to be um, back when my grandparents were young. Um, kind of makes me wish that I was back there. It's very nostalgic. Miss Kate, Mrs. Kate Rhodes says her favorite movie is a Christmas classic. A Christmas story because of the subtle sarcasm in that it's not over the top, yet it's really, really funny. The favorite season, this holiday season, check out one of these films to get into the Christmas spirit for Airwaves Media. And to all, a good night. I'm Evan Sanderson. Man, I really miss my grandma's homemade cookies. I can't wait to eat them this year. I really miss my aunt's honey cam. I can't wait to dig into it this Christmas. Many students have their own family traditions and recipes. Christian Carpenter and Tegan Carlisle talk to students to hear what their families are cooking up this year for Christmas. A lot of people have their favorite foods during the holidays and these are some of their favorite things to eat during Christmas. We always eat it around this time, like during Christmas and stuff, uh, is apple pie, like some cinnamon apple pie, like homemade. I love it. Check it. Sometimes like Thanksgiving food. But that's what we get. I think my favorite Christmas food is probably just ham. My favorite Christmas food would probably be Mississippi mud pie. My favorite Christmas food's gotta be ham. 
Mac and cheese. Uh, my favorite Christmas food is chicken. And macaroni. Roast chicken. Um, probably like sugar cookies. This is Christian and Tegan with Airways Media. The Alma Band has been preparing for the Winter Band concert. It will have lots of music for everyone to enjoy. Here is Tyler Wilcox and Grayson Hopper with more on the band concert. Many students here at AHS are part of elective classes like band or choir, both of which have Christmas concerts. And with Christmas coming up pretty soon, so are the Christmas concerts. We interviewed band director Mr. Townsend on the band's Christmas concert. I'm excited for every performance that we do. I'm excited that we actually get to do an in-person Christmas concert, so that is exciting, yes. Well, we're doing several pieces. Um, I'm excited that we're trying to do the Leroy Anderson sleigh ride, which is a very difficult piece of music, and um, hopefully we'll be able to get that to a point where we can perform it and pull it off. Well, there you have it, folks. Students will not be taking it out of class for this event. It will take place on December 13th on a Monday at the PAC here in Alma. These students have been working very hard, and I'm sure they would appreciate it if some other students would come to watch them. I'm Grayson. And I'm Tyler with Airways Media. The yearly flu shot is here, and a lot of people are wondering why should they get this vaccine? Here is Brianna Langston with more information about the importance of getting your flu shot. We got an inside scoop from a local doctor about why you should consider getting the flu shot this year more than ever. It is important to get a flu shot, especially since COVID is present in our lives now, because getting a flu shot will help protect you against any other infectious diseases that could lower your immune system and make you more susceptible to COVID or make your COVID infection more complicated with the existence of the flu. Dr. Hertlin says she recommends the flu shot for all ages. Younger people need the shot as much as older people for various reasons. Number one is because you could get the flu and pass it on to your parents or even your grandparents, especially during times of the holidays or visiting with them. So protecting others against the flu is a good reason for young people to get the flu shot. And also complications from the flu have been known to cause pneumonia in younger people. So it's always a good reason, number one, to protect yourself and number two, to protect other people from the flu. She said flu cases could get higher this year than what it was last year. They have said that the projected out look for the flu could be worse than last year because last year it was not as bad as it has been in the past, mainly due to the precautions that people were observing because of COVID. So we may see a rise in flu cases just from exposure. The other thing is that there may be other strains out there that have developed and it is said that they are actually protecting against four different strains. And this flu shot that you will get is known as a quadrivariant flu shot and protects against four different strains. One of the strains similar to the swine flu that we saw over 10 years ago. So this year you're protected probably against more strains than you were in the past. She wants to remind people that flu shots could be just as important as the COVID vaccine. So another thing I wanted to add about the flu vaccine is that we're so focused on COVID and getting people fully vaccinated or protected against COVID and following guidelines that I found that people have tended to forget about the flu and forget about getting their flu vaccinations. Even in my own household with my children, they are excited because they're fully vaccinated and I had to remind them last night that no, you are not fully vaccinated because you haven't gotten your flu shot yet. And they were surprised because they had sort of forgotten about it. So don't forget about the flu is still out there and the vaccination is your best protection against that virus as well. This is Brianna Langston with Airways Media. The ROTC cadets have been hard at work, taking aim and getting their shots down as they practice to learn how to use their air rifles. Stetson Goodson and Jace Brantley shoot their shot at covering this topic. For multiple programs in the ROTC, 
system. But today we will be talking about the Marksman program and what the qualifications are to enter the program. Well, the Marksmanship program is actually a program we've adopted from the Civilian Marksmanship program and they have a very stringent uh, tr set of training standards and testing parameters that we must complete. So to be part of the rifle team, you need to pass the marksmanship safety exam with a minimum score of 100% accuracy. We are open to all ranks from freshmen through seniors. Currently, one of our best shooters is an exchange student from France. Uh, be gun smart. You just got to know what you're doing. You got to be smart about it. And if you, uh, if you fail your test, and that's your entire test for the year. Now that you heard the qualifications, here is the safety training. The safety training is very similar to all other types of rifle and pistol training, such as what one would accomplish for their hunting, hunter safety license uh, here in the state of Arkansas. Uh, this, the training primarily revolves around operating the rifle safely so that there are no injuries or damage to the equipment. This is Jace Braley and Stetson Goodson from Airways Media. Hunting is one of the most popular hobbies in the South, but what makes it so popular? Lewis Alexander and Christian Sullivan discuss this topic. Hunting season can be difficult at times. We talked to a licensed hunter teaching you about gun safety and tips. Uh, it's enjoyable. Really, everything I do about hunting is something I enjoy being out in the outdoors, seeing outdoors, seeing the pretty scenery, all the terrain and stuff that we do. It's just a, it's a lot of fun. Safety is a really big deal. You always want to make sure you've got good gun control. You want to teach any young guy you take gun control. You know, safety is always on. Make sure your gun's never pointed in the wrong direction. And make sure it's pointed at something you want to shoot, not somebody. Best tip I have for them, just be persistent. You know, don't give up the first time you go. If you don't find something you want to hunt, or you know, if you don't have any luck, don't quit. Just keep enjoying it. We asked Rick Rice about the butchering process. On an average, we pull 150 to 200 deer a day during gun season. Um, through the process of the, the gun season, we have, um, I think the first four days, we pulled in 700 deer in the first four days that, uh, of this year, 2021. Yeah, what we do, uh, we, uh, we enjoy processing meat, but we also like the relationship that we build with our customers. Um, and on, when we process our meat, like on our deer, each individual deer has its own tags. So if you have a claim number, that claim number stays with your deer and how you want it processed. This is Lewis Alexander and Chris Sullivan with Airwaves Media. There are many genres of music in the world, like rap, hip-hop, and jazz. What are people's favorite genres of music, though? Ben Mitchell and Destiny Wheeler found out more. As much as we listen to music day to day, we often take for granted its effect on our life as a whole. Music, in some forms, can help form our personalities from when we're children to when we're adults. In fact, for some, music is an easy strand of comfort and very easy to find nowadays with applications such as Spotify and YouTube. To get themselves pumped up for a game or for dancing, some people like to listen to faster, more upbeat genres like rock or pop. To make themselves calm, some people listen to slower music genres like jazz or certain solo artists who make music that's relaxing. Pop, rock, classical, country, jazz, techno, and hip-hop are some of the many genres of music that people listen to and that affect some of the elements of your personality. From an article called Music Preferences and Your Personality by Kendra Cherry. Despite the sometimes aggressive image that rock and heavy metal music project, researchers found that fans of this style of music are usually quite gentle. They tend to be creative, but are often introverted and might suffer from low self-esteem. While some people who listen to pop music can be more outgoing, honest, and conventional, they can also be a little less creative than others and have feelings of uneasiness. People who listen to jazz music are fond of being more creative, intelligent, and at ease. They can also be more extroverted and have more self-esteem. We interviewed Mr. Whitworth on the subject. Uh, here's his input. I knew early on that I wanted to be a band director. I think that's what I wanted to do more than anything. And so, I mean, you're like, well, why are you a choir director, you may ask. Uh, when I first graduated college, I became a band director. And I was also hired to start a choir at the same time. And so I was a band director and choir director for nine years. 
uh, at the end of those uh, nine years, our superintendent, Mr. Willie, came a call in and said, hey, would you like to come to Alma, check out the program and possibly be our choir director? And I did, and I took the job, and so I've been doing choir only for the past 19 years. This is Ben Mitchell and Destiny Wheeler signing off from Airways Media. With the holidays coming soon, people will be traveling and going out a lot. Ethan Moore and Dalton Davis have more about tips on being safe during this time. During the holidays, people enjoy getting out to the shopping centers to buy gifts for their friends and family. Yet it can be dangerous for any holiday goer if you don't keep your ears, your eyes and ears open for all possible situations. Well, uh, when you're when you're shopping for your Christmas gifts, it's always a good idea to uh, shop during daylight hours if you can. You're, you're typically safer during daylight than you are at night. And you always want to shop with a group if you can. Uh, try not to do any of your shopping alone. And uh, make sure that you keep uh, up with your, your purse or your handbag or your wallet to make sure no one's trying to steal your money. And uh, always check your car before you get into it to make sure there's not someone hiding in your car is always a good idea. And then if you buy packages or presents from more than one place, uh, always try to hide those in the trunk where a thief can't see them. Also, people enjoy traveling during the holidays, but if you travel during the holidays, make sure you are fully prepared. If you're gonna travel during the holidays, make sure that you check your car before you leave, make sure it's mechanically sound, and then always have a little emergency kit with you with some food and water and a blanket just in case you get stuck on the road somewhere and try to always make sure your cell phone is fully charged. So get out there and enjoy the holiday season. This is Ethan Moore and Don Davis with Airways Media. Thanks for watching this week's edition of The Airedale. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow all social media. And as always, by the wise words of T-Mac, Go, Go Airedales! Airedales.